Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Are you glad you came to church today? Are you excited in the house of God? Amen, amen. I'm excited that I'm here as well. We are glad that you are here, that you answer the call. For those of you that haven't traveled yet, um, it is a blessing to have you in the house of God. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. And Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. I'm excited to be here and to stand here before everyone. It is the honor of my life to share this pulpit and to share the word of God. Amen. 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 I also should say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it is the 20th of December. As I was getting ready in the morning, I remembered a word that Pastor Alice shared with us just as we were crossing over into 2020. And she called us SKPs. Do you remember that? From the book of Psalm 124, that the snare has been broken and we have escaped. And she coined the word, I had never heard it before when um, here. She said, we are escapees. And we were asked to look around to a couple of people, give a high five to a couple of people, oh, that we would be able to still give a high five to people. <laughs> we were asked at that time to give a high five to a couple of people and tell them, oh, you are an escapee. And some of us were just refusing to give high fives. Tazama sasa kwa But today as I was getting ready, I actually remembered that Imagine you are an SKP. So I want to give you the opportunity, only this time minus the high five. Please turn to your neighbor and tell them you are an SKP. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. The Bible actually says like a bird in flight. Have you seen a bird in flight that is taking off from the ground just going? Like a bird in flight, we have escaped. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. The 20th of December. And man, isn't this the doing of the Lord? And isn't it marvelous in our eyes? I want you to just take a moment and think back on where you have been this year. Some of you have come so, cl so close, so close like this. <laughs> you didn't even know it, but imagine you did. As we're looking at the cell discussion, for those of you who are in home cells, and I'm sure I hope that's a lot of you here. Um, as we're looking at the cell discussion, in the cell discussion there in that write-up, we're saying that some of us have brushed shoulders. We have brushed shoulders with death but you didn't even know it. That's the level of comfort um, or premium care that the Lord continues to give to us, that you are an escape. I want you to soak it in, as Bishop says. Just soak it in. Think about it. The places that you have been through. Some of you are seated in this place. You lost your jobs towards the beginning of the year. Some of your sources of income, maybe your businesses suffered loss, and you didn't think you were going to make it. It doesn't matter how you're looking, but you have made it anyway. You're standing here. Amen. Maybe you're thinking, hey, there's still many days to the end of the year, about 11. But imagine you've come all this way. Whatever 366, this was a leap year, yeah? Kwanzaa, there was an extra day in this year. Imagine. And you have overcome. <laughs> and you have overcome. We bless the name of Jesus forever. Amen. John chapter 1, from verse 1. John chapter 1. I'm going to be sharing on a title. My working title was God in flesh. John chapter 1. I'm going to read all the way to verse 14 in the New King James. Let's just follow together. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. His, this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light. Um, yes, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Father, we ask that you would speak to us in your own voice today, that we will hear exactly what you're saying to us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Gospel of John um, is not as detailed in giving the Bible, uh, in giving the story of Jesus Christ as the other Gospels, like, the, like um, Matthew and Luke. It's not as detailed, but it captures some important truths. It captures some important things. Where it starts, like, unlike Matthew and Luke, is not of the birth of Jesus Christ, or even giving the genealogy, or where Jesus came from. That's not what it does. But from where it starts from, it starts almost as the same as how the Bible begins in the book of Genesis. Just almost. It says, in the beginning was the word. In Genesis chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This one says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, going all the way back into the beginning, alluding to Genesis, that how the, the, the start of all these things, and says, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Of course, it's talking about Jesus. As you continue to read um, onward, you realize that it's talking about Jesus. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Reminds us of what the Bible talks about in the book of Colossians chapter 1, going downward from 16, talking about in him all things hold together, all right? In him, all things hold together, that he is the center of all things. You see, when something is the one that holds all things together, it is like a central, if I, if I would have, um, if it is in the center of something and other things are hanging on top of it, there's this um, contraption I used to have in high school. Okay, I don't know what it's, whether it's called. I don't know what to call it, but I had a thing, kitu ya pegs, okay? So, um, it was a thing like this, and then there were rods hanging on the side. <laughs> there were rods that were hanging on the side, and the pegs were hanging. So you could hang your clothes in one spot, but Oh, yes? Okay, great. So it's, um, it was a central pillar, like the mic, and then it had like prongs protruding, and then the end of the prongs, there were hanging pegs. Okay? So you could hang your clothes all around, but in the same spot. And in high school, it was very necessary because you will go na anika nguo hivi kwa laini, ukikuja unapata hakuna nguo kwa laini. Lakini hii kakitu, unaweza ukasonga na uenda na darasani. Unai hang pale kwa dirisha, nguo ziko inje wa ukondani. Hakuna mtu anaweza kazi chukua ukiwa hapo. Ukienda break, unabeba nguo zako, unaenda. Survival for the fittest. That central thing there was the thing that, <laughs> that held all these things together. Okay? Sawa, sawa. If you took this thing away, all the other prongs with the pegs and the clothes would fall apart. I want you to understand that concept of something being in the middle, holding everything together. You know of um, the human being's spinal cord, Sindio, the one that allows you to be able to stand straight. If that one is injured or broken or any other kind of, you know, in dislocation, whatever, you're not able to keep your form and stand straight. Sindio, that is, we would ideally say that that is a thing that is holding the form together. All these other bones are just, you know, very close attached to it or, yeah. But, um, again, they say, now, physically, yani kwa ile structure of the body, that spine is doing its job. But then when we're looking at the body parts, what would we say holds all things together? Is it the heart or is it the brain? I, I didn't talk to any doctors while I was preparing this sermon, so that's why I'm asking these questions. Okay. Um, but, you know, when your heart stops beating, you're dead, really. But the machines could keep it pumping. I think when the brain now stops working, when you're brain dead, I think now you're dead, dead. Okay. The idea I'm trying to explain is this, of something that holds all things together. Now, it describes Jesus as exactly that, that in him all things hold together. The first thing that we get out of what John is talking about is that outside of him, everything falls apart. Now, every time I like to ask myself, if I find that something in my life looks like it is falling apart, like it is not holding up the way it should be holding up, I'm asking myself, where is Jesus in this thing? Because if Jesus is not at the center of whatever it is, you can be sure that it's falling apart. It might look like it is standing, but it is falling apart. Have you seen of people, <laughs> have you seen, 
Have you seen of people who, like when you're getting ready, ama when you're in a hurry, like you can get out of your clothes, alafu unaacha nguozi kwa hapo inakani kama imesimama. Lakini hauko hapo ndani. That cloth looks like it is standing, but it is not. Because you and I both know that it cannot hold up there forever. Hii nguo ambayo umevaa inasimama hivi kwa sababu niko ndani yake. If I were to get out of it and leave it like that, it could remain that way, but all it needs is something very simple to put it to put it down. Sindio? Are we together? Great. So it is possible that even in our own lives it could look like things are standing, like things are all together, but if Jesus is not at the very center of those things, those things are going to fall apart. Now I know most times we are used to saying that oh there's the spiritual things in life and then there's the other things. I don't think there are other things that are not governed by things that are not spiritual. Because life fully in all its essence, essence is spiritual. All right? That if Jesus is not at the center of your job, of your education, of your family, of your business, of your ministry, if Jesus is not the very center of it, at the core of it, it will all fall apart. Bona sefiwe. So he says that in him all things all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made then it says in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it another meaning for that comprehend is to overcome or to overpower ancient okay but um, it says that he is the light of men now brings another aspect. First of all, he is the one that holds all things together. Okay, he is the center. Now he is the one that illuminates. Somehow he's the one that brings light to the life of men. And he continues to give that for a few more verses and we're going to see it. All right? That outside of him, you fall apart. And then outside of him, there is not just falling apart or lack of structure. There is also gloom and darkness. One of my favorite portions of scripture is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 50 and in the in the in the amplified version uh, from verse 10 it says is there anyone among you who walks in darkness let him look lean on and rely in in the Lord woe and then it continues to verse 11 woe unto you anyone that makes for themselves their own firebrands. You light up for yourself your own works of salvation. The Lord says, this shall you have from my hand. You shall lie down in grief and in torment. This is the Lord himself saying that if there is anyone among you, as you're walking around life, you find yourselves in some darkness. You find yourself in some confusion. You find yourself in some situations that are difficult. You don't understand. It says, if there is anyone among you, let him lean on and rely on his own God. All right? Let him trust in Jesus. Because in life, there are difficulties. We face difficulties. You and I both know that. It was not that in 2020, it was the believers that were kept away from trouble. We did not feel the, the pain of this thing. No, there were believers that lost their jobs. There were believers that were sick. There were believers that passed on in this year. It is not that it is the believers that were spared and then the sinners were wiped away. And that's not what was happening. True or true? Actually, Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33, speaking to his disciples and not the Pharisees, says to them, I tell you these things so that you may have peace. In this world you will face tribulations, but be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. Not just the tribulation. I have overcome the element in which the tribulation exists. Hallelujah. Because it says inside of this world you will face tribulation. Outside, you know, it is the, the, the tribulation is existing inside of the world. So he says, in this world, you will face tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, not the tribulation. If the world is taken away, there is no tribulation. Where is the tribulation happening? In the world. So if the world is taken away, if the world is conquered, then the tribulation does not stand a chance. Hallelujah. So Jesus says, be of good cheer. It interests my heart to think that Jesus is not speaking to the Pharisees. He's not speaking to the evil people of his day. He's not telling them, I am telling you, you're going to eat trouble. Mtakula shida. Mtakua affected. No, he's talking to the disciples, his followers. He's telling the people that are walking with him, I want you to know that you will face tribulation. That interests my heart because it lets me know that as a follower of Jesus Christ, as a disciple, that I am not left out. But I am also not left out in the solution, in the end product where he has overcome the, both the trouble and the tribulation and the element in which it exists. I am not left out of that. If I suffer with him, then I shall also reign together with Jesus. 
He says, in this world, you will face tribulation. But he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have done it for you. Now, he says to the disciples this, just, um, he hasn't died before that. He hasn't died, okay? So, after he is risen, now, um, he has already overcome death, hell, and the grave. Now, it even gives them a better place to stand on. You and I are coming after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, we know we already have a model of him beating that which no man has beaten before. Isn't that a man that we can trust? Hallelujah. So it says, let him rely on. Let him lean on and trust in his God. If there is anyone that fears the Lord, reveres the Lord, but finds themselves in trouble. So if you find yourself in some sort of confusion, it says, let him rely on the Lord. Then it says, but woe unto you. I'm quoting Isaiah 50 and 11. But woe unto you, workers of your own, who work, um, what does it say? Who Work for your own selves. You light up your own firebrands. You create your own means, your own plans of salvation. He says, this shall you have from my hand. You shall lie down in grief and in torment. In other words, if you're not looking to Jesus, if your eyes are not fixed on him, if your help is not coming from him alone, then you find yourselves in a cycle. The image it gives in there is that it says, Woe unto you who light up your own momentary sparks. You know a momentary sparks, a momentary spark. It doesn't last forever. It's like um, on the thirty-first where we usually put fireworks displays. So you know that. Okieka fireworks, they go up and they light up the darkest of skies, and it looks like a brilliant display. All of a sudden, it looks like there is light in the sky. It looks like the day has come, but it is momentary. Sooner or later, it fades back and the darkness comes. Anyone that tries to sort out their lives without Jesus is like somebody who is putting up momentary sparks. You are shooting it up, and all of a sudden, where they look, they look like there is darkness in your life, all of a sudden there is brightness, and people around you are like, wow, this guy is moving on. But you and I both know the solution is not Jesus. It is temporal at best. You find yourself doing what? Back in the same darkness. That's how we find ourselves in what we call cycles. You're in a cycle. You thought you were out of it, but then all of a sudden you're right back in. Because you're using solutions, momentary sparks. It calls it firebrands. Things that are momentary firebrands. And in a, in a, in a motto, you find yourself running. You're so passionate about something. And all of a sudden you've left it alone. We are wondering, Ay, we have such a high turnover of people who are serving. It shouldn't be that way. It should be that people are coming and the only way that you're living is because you have retired and the Lord has relocated you to another place. But unakuja, unasav, tunakuona. Let me use the worship team because I'm part of this team. Unakuja kwa worship team, unasav, unasav, unasav. Tunasema, wow, wow, wow. And then all of a sudden, like, kwani ule nani alienanga? And nobody knows. Pastor Millicent does not know where you went. None of the leaders in the worship team know where you went. Uli disappear too. Watu wana krafta kwa simu. Atu uli badilisha namba. Unapata natu na watu uko. Nisema, ah, nilitoka uko. Mi nilisikia tu. Like, siko tu. Siko and I feel. Because even in our service, whatever we are doing, if your service is not centered on Jesus, it is momentary. It is temporal at best. You go to school and you, yesterday a friend of mine was giving me a story of another friend of, of well, I wouldn't say he's my friend, you know, of another acquaintance um, who has been in campus, I think, four times um, to do different things. Na ni mdogo kuniliko, wako na miaka kidogo kuniliko. See, four times see at master's na doctorate, see at yanapanda na kuongeza ma degree. Ana ingia, anasoma, passionate about this thing. Now this time, new year, new me. Have you heard that line? New year, new me. In 2021, we are learning good lessons in 2020. So this friend of, of, of ours, um, new me, new year, new me, and then Kiana, you una shika, and then Punda si Punde, una chana nayo. But as you are going to say, una taka kosgani, ile nye una skia, and then mimi sasa na taka hospitality. Sema, oh, hospitality. They look for the best of the schools. Uku. Umepele kwa sijui yanga HTI. Unaingia uko, unenda, unapika uko kwa makitchen. Tu, anakuona tu, hivi, unakoroga tu, makeki. Two seconds later, you're done. Like me, I don't think that's what I was created to do. I don't know, unasikia ni kama unataka. Sama, mimi na unanganikan. I was born to be a pilot. Wanaktaftia shule uko, air school uko, uko South Africa. 
umeenda umesoma huko. Ah, ndege za wenyewe kwa kweli hauzitoi kwenye <laughs> you're not getting them off the ground. <laughs> A solution I would give for somebody and maybe you're here and maybe you're not exactly like that, but you're struggling with finding what it is that you are created for. Would I suggest that you go back to the manufacturer? That you go back to the one that holds all things together? You go back to the light of men? and go and sit with him and say there is darkness in this part of my life would you please light it up and show me what i am built for maybe you're going back and forth and back and forth it's the same thing by the way with everything even with relationships you find yourself you're in a relationship today and you're like wow my boo my bae my every single thing you post them and post them and post them on instagram on facebook on tiktok on whatever other twitter hala punde si punde kwa kweli tunaanza kuona umeanza kupost hapa umeanza ku quote Aristotle umeanza ku quote nini oh unasema hata una quote biblia a brother is born for adversity but there is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother tunasema eh hey, brother so and so ameshika moto wa injili si moto wa injili kwa kweli ameoachwa and then you come back again and you're like now i have found the one you know those things that people quote on their wedding cards wedding invitation i have found the one whom my soul loves tunasema tunakupa tu muda basi shall you stand the test of time tunasema if you are a true prophet a prophet shall be known like bishop tells us <laughs> by the coming um, by the fulfillment of the prophecy kwa sababu umesimama ukatu professor hiyo ukatuambia she is the one sema acha acha tukupe ma time tu and then on your wedding day we come and celebrate when you see us celebrating in weddings it's because ha huh? truly <laughs> this is a true prophet <laughs> but if you find yourself going back and forth in relationships like that would i suggest that you go back to the light of men go and sit with him and ask him how may i navigate this relationship it's not just for the relationship of lovers even in your family maybe you're always the one who is always falling out with people Leo uko marafiki na hii camp ya my cousins alafu hao wengine waongeleshi ile in the next season ni hawa sasa ndio marafiki wale walikuwa maadui alafu sasa wale ndio maadui alafu ile season nyingine sasa ni huyu if you find yourself in such a cycle i want you to just consider who is the common denominator could it be that you are the problem <laughs> okay let me come to this side <laughs> I mean if you are the one that each time kuna kuwa na shida wewe uko na shida na hawa alafu next year ni shida na hawa hiyo mwaka mwingine ni shida na hawa na hawa sasa wamekuwa wazuri sasa hawa ndio wabaya imagine you are the common denominator wewe ndio unakuwa na shida na kila mtu ukizunguka hivi cycle likiisha unaanza mwaka mwingine sasa ni huyu sasa hawa ndio I suggest you go back to the light of men sit with him now it says um, I want to go right to verse 9 it says that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world it does not ex- exclude anyone it does not remove anyone it does not say it brings light to the pastors that come into the world it does not say that it gives light to the leaders or presidents it does not say it brings light it says it gives light to every man coming into the world if you find yourself in the world and you're in the world right now because you were born and you're seated in front of me if you find yourself here it means that you came in darkness and you need someone to light up your life hallelujah oh what an interesting what an interesting and powerful truth we were sharing with a friend of mine last night and we were saying that it is powerful that the light has a name and his name is jesus I am so glad that our solution has a name because it's not something we are going around. Have you tried to look for medication and you don't know what it's called? Umeenda kwa chemist hivi unataka dawa lakini hujui inaitwa nini? Whether generic name ama ile jina yao ya hata hakuna yenye unajua na hauna kale ka blister pack ka packet kale ka ile dawa ilisha. So unaenda unasema kuna ile dawa inakuanga ya pink. Unajua dawa ngapi za pink? Ziko huku. Unatolewa hadi zingine hata hujui ni za kufanya nini. Unaangalia hivi unasema sio hii lakini nakaa kama hii inakuwa ilikuwa 500 mg dawa za 500 mg nyingi kwa kweli kwa hii dunia it is difficult when you're looking for something that you don't have a name for ama unaenda unataf una, you want you know there's a solution but is solution au kwa sure 
That is why it is important for me when the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9 and 6, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and his name shall be called. That every time we hear that name, we know our solution has come. When we find peace, it says his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Our, our solution has a name. His name is Jesus. That excites my heart to think that I don't have to keep going around looking for a solution. Our solution has a name. If I am peaceless, I know that my solution is called the Prince of Peace. If I am finding myself in depression and darkness, I can go back to my solution because the Bible says my solution has a name. His name is the light of the world, John 8, 12. It says that I am the light of the world. If anyone walks in me, he shall not be caught in darkness. If you find yourself in confusion today, your mind is foggy, you're so confused, you're depressed, you don't know what's happening, I want to, cons to ask you to consider the light of life this morning. That you just sit with him. Hallelujah. Now it says, he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. And I want to pause there for just a second because I think it's really sad. When it says he came to his own, it's like somebody coming back home. He came back home and he came among his people and his own did not even know him. It says his own did not receive him. It's like you going back home after a long trip. And this person, oh my, you're excited because you're a father, you've been traveling for long, some of you here maybe are fathers who have worked outside of the country before, I'm outside of the town before, and you know, you have small children you left at home, so I just want to go na labda hizo masiku, haukuwaga na Zoom, na Meet, na Skype, na yoma. So, unakuja nyumbani, you're so excited, you just want to see your small baby. <laughs> and you get home, they're running towards you, they're wondering, who is this man? And then run right back because they don't understand. You came to your own. I'm sure that feeling is not a good feeling. Of course, unajaribu kuji tuliza moyo unasema ni juni mtoto hajajua badu. Tutakieti tu pamoja. But it inachoma, inaumiza. Inaku. That's not what I was going to say, but. <laughs> it, is a, it is a painful thing when you're coming to your own and your own does not receive you. Have you seen politicians when they are going around to their own places and you're expecting that there is a mega, mega crowd waiting for you back at home, but the people of your home cannot wait for 2022 to send you packing? Sisi kama watu wa Kiambu County, tunajua what it means to... I remember when the elections were coming and we wanted to take out the, I really don't want to mention names because I mean, that's not what we do in this pulpit. I uh, wanted to take out the former governor, the former, former governor. Hey, we've had many. Well, the, was it the first governor? I think we wanted to take out the first governor. And the people were saying, Ata sitaki kupigia rais kura, naenda tu nirushe moja tu hivi ya governor. Tu mutoe. So you can imagine this person, watu wa mempangia wa namtua, lakini ya mepanga hivi. Anaenda kufanya mega, mega hivi, mega rally. Anafika huko, anapata hata watu wa wako. Sasa watu wake wananza kulipa watu kwa maduka, wanawambia, funga duka, nitakupatia, hii, enyu ungetengeneza leo, wende usimame kwa stadium. Anasema, ukiniruza, unipati hiyo pesa, alafu imandizi yangu niruzu ni ibebe, ni kayuzie huko. Anasema, sawa, nendo unaketi hapo kwa stadium, unauza. Well, unendelea biashara yako, ndi ule at least akona ka crowd. It must be very hurtful for such leaders when you're coming to your own and your own does not receive you. Do you remember the kind of fracas that was there when our athletes came, I don't know from where they had won or whatever. Was it Harambis? I don't remember who it was. It was some athletes. And they came to the airport and there was nobody to receive them. Do you remember that time? I think it was last year. And it was all over the news. <laughs> And some of the leaders of the ministry had to really apologize and put together press conferences and explain. And I say, imagine the national team is coming back. The activists were all up in arms. And they were saying the, the national team is coming back and there's nobody to receive them. It is so disappointing when you come back to your own and your own does not receive you. But I am so glad that Jesus Christ was not stopped by that. Imagine if he had come to his own and his own rejected him. He was walking right among them. And the Jews were like, mm -mm, we're still waiting for our Messiah. And he's like, I am he. 
Remember his conversation with the woman at the well in John chapter 4? It's like, if you knew who it was that you're talking to. And the woman is just like, mm, as you're waiting for Messiah, mm, tu mezaya, satu tadu, tu mezaya, sisi. <laughs> you have come to your own. I am so glad that Jesus was made of tough skin. That people did not just reject him and he was like, Misa nimerudi heaven, saa, saa, mi nimejaribu kusave watu, na nimerudi wa menikata. Oh, I am glad that my master has some staying power. And that says to me that it doesn't matter what I go through in life. My master has staying power. He will stay with me through the thick and the thin. Oh, I want to just finish by reading this final one in verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the one begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh. The word became flesh. I am so glad that we are commemorating this season that the word became flesh. That he didn't just sit in heaven and pronounce salvation to man. He didn't just sit on the balcony of heaven and said, henceforth, you shall be called sons of God. No, no, no. He became flesh. He came and he walked and dwelt among men. That says to me that he was tested in every way, Hebrews 4 and 16. Tested in every way, it says we do not have a high priest who does not feel or who is not touched by the feeling of our infirmity, but one who was tested in every way, one who was tested in every way, one who felt every single thing, one who was pushed and shoved, one who was hated by men, one who was spat on, one who was pierced on the side, one who wore the crown of thorns, one who was rejected, that one, he feels, he relates with our infirmity. Hallelujah. That is the high priest that we have. So it says, therefore, in light of these things, let us come boldly to the throne of God. To that throne of mercy that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I don't know who is in this place that is in a time of need right now, but imagine the word became flesh and that allows us to come boldly into the presence of God. To come boldly as children. Verse 12 says there that he came to his own and his own accepted him not, but to everyone who received him, to everyone who believed in in his name. He gave them the power. He gave them the power, the right, the privilege to be called children of God. And if they are children, they are also heirs together with him. It says children not born of the will of the flesh, children not born of the will or the desire of men, but children born of the very will of God. You and I, beloved, that is what we have become. Why? Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Imagine I am so glad that Jesus Christ did not just remain in those days like, like in the Old Testament where we will just go into a place, into that holy of holies, hidden in there that only one person was allowed to go back there and the rest of us woye people will remain at the back here wondering now how shall it be atakumbuka kesi yangu leo, atakumbuka mimi kunitetea, atakumbuka no, when Jesus Christ became flesh, then after a couple of years the temple curtain was ripped into two and it said we have access now you can come boldly into the presence come on here you can come into the presence of god where you can obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your hour of need i don't know whether we have a couple of people here who are in need if you can just lift up your voice and begin to speak to god because the word became flesh and dwelt among us it is my joy and my celebration that the word that became flesh and dwelt among us did not stop dwelling among us just before he went back to heaven, he says to the disciples, I'm not going to leave you guys alone. You're not going to be alone. I'm going to send you a helper, the Holy Spirit, teacher, comforter, guide, another one of the same kind who will come and lead you into all truth, who will help you in times that you're confused. He's going to be your counselor, the Holy Spirit. Oh man, that is the joy that we celebrate this morning. That Jesus Christ came and dwelt among us. We are not alone, not anymore. In Isaiah chapter 7, as the prophecy is given, it says, And a virgin shall bear a child, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, to mean God with us. 
it is my joy and celebration as well to remind us this morning that he did not just come to be with us and then left. When he goes back to heaven, just after rising back, he says, all power and authority has been given to me, says to the disciples. All power and authority in heaven has been given to me. He says, go out and make disciples. And then he says to them, and do not be afraid because I am am with you. He doesn't say I will be with you as if they are waiting for something in the future. He says I am with you until the end of the age. When he said his name shall be called God with us. It means that even today he is with us. God in flesh dwelling among men. He is right in your home. He is right in your heart. Christ in us, the Bible says Colossians 1 and 27, the hope of glory. Christ in us. The word became flesh and that is what we celebrate, beloved. You can come boldly into his presence that you may obtain mercy and find grace. Won't you just lift up your voice and say, God help me that I may be able to come in with boldness into your presence. The word became flesh for such a people as you and I, beloved. The word became flesh for such a season as this. The word became flesh that you may not have to perish. If you're here, you're, a no, you're not a believer. You've never given your life to Jesus. The Bible says that the word became flesh that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you are here, you've never given your life to Jesus. The word became flesh because because of you, do not spend another day in anguish. Do not spend another day in darkness. Do not spend another day in confusion. The word became flesh for you and I. The word became flesh that none of us will have to suffer. That man should no more die or perish. The word became flesh for such a people as us. If you're here, you gave your life to Jesus Christ, but you've been walking in cycles of sin and confusion. The word became flesh for such a people as you, that you might be able to walk boldly into the presence of God that you may obtain mercy and find grace for your time of need. You are in a time of need. If you are here and you believe in Jesus Christ but you are going through darkness you are going through a season of confusion oh I pray that you would open up your eyes this morning to the truth that the word became flesh and dwelt among men but it's not just past tense anymore. He says I am not going to leave you. I am with you until the end of the age. The word became flesh and still dwells among men. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you because you did not just suffer and die. You rose again in power, in authority, but you did not ascend to heaven and leave us alone. You say you are with us through the darkness, through the confusion, through the difficult things of this life. You are with us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. We are never alone. We are never alone. We are never alone, Lord Jesus. And we worship you because we are never alone. What an invitation you give to us this morning. Because we are never alone, Lord Jesus. And so because you are with us, we ask that you will help us to stay with you as well. That we will always abide by the fountain of delights. That we will come right to where you are. That we will not wander off to, from you, O oh Lord Jesus. But that we will desire to settle at your feet. Because this is the believer's distinction to be where their Lord and Master is. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Want to just lift up your voice and worship Him? Oh, we worship you, worship. That's right, that's right, that's right. Lift up your voice and worship Him. He became flesh so that you can be able to come close to him. It says, let us walk boldly into his presence that we may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I don't know about you, but I am always in a time of need. Lord, how we need you today. How we need you. And so, Lord, because you've made that invitation, we come to you. And you have a name. Our solution has a name and it's Jesus. Oh, our hope has a name for every hopeless situation. Our hope has a name and his name is Jesus. Healing has a name and his name is Jesus. Oh, rekashi praketa yenda la bosa kashe sayandere If you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus. Want to just lift up your hand? We'd love to pray with you right now. 
If you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus. If you just lift up your hand, we'll pray together with you real quick in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for every single one of us today. We thank you because this is the assurance we leave this place with today. That the word became flesh and dwelt among men. But the word also became flesh and still dwells among men. So we can walk into the throne room of God and find grace, obtain mercy to help us in our time of need. And so we come right to your throne today with the boldness of sons coming to their father. And we say thank you, O oh God, for coming to us in Jesus' name.